All right, should be ready to go. Well, this morning I have Jan Mitchell, uh, a past client of mine and friend in Chicago, uh, talking about her experience of, uh, you know, selecting her real estate agent in a transaction that we worked on about a year ago. So Jen, welcome to the show and thank you for being on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, Mark. So how have you been? How's life up in Chicago over there? Uh, I would like to say cold, but it's not as cold as it has been. So more sunnier side now. Perfect. How's the real estate market over there? Um, you know what? It's not challenging at all right now. Houses are going. They're not really staying on the market long. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing that here. It has been incredibly, incredibly competitive. Um, I, I just put a house on the market on Tuesday. By Wednesday, I had 70 agents already booked to see the house. Yeah. I've already gotten, so we're, we, we have an offer review date. So we're gonna see offers on Tuesday. And um, I already got four offers. And I think I'm getting about, oh, I would say 20 calls or texts a day saying, are you going to honor the, the review date? Are you accepting an early offer? And we are honoring, honoring it. Um, but yeah, these houses are selling quick and i'm hearing that from different areas across the, across the country so yeah, it sounds it's a like buyer's market yeah. it's a buyer's market or a seller's market well seller's market no okay. well sellers no sellers because they're the ones that, that are selling it quick and there's not enough inventory yeah. <laughs> oh my god yeah and it's you know and i was just talking to my assistant yesterday and she's like is it just here in seattle i'm like no it is happening in California. You know, I had told them that I had talked to to you and I'm like, I think it's happening over the two, but I'm going to ask her and in Spokane and different areas, more remote areas, even here in, in Washington that um, are just selling quick and they're competitive and escalating and waving everything. It's like, oh my God, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, congrats to all of the sellers who are out there, you know, you know, killing it. So good for them. You gotta make a movie, you better make it now. <laughs> right, exactly. That's what I say. Um, so, hey, you know, I wanted to talk about, um, about your experience of, of working with, um, you know, when you and your sister had to sell the house a year ago, what was your experience with selecting an agent and your criteria? And you know, let's start off with, the, you know, with, with, I guess, one of the big questions that people are always, you know, talking about or considering, you know, in, when it comes to selling their house is why not sell the house on your own? So why didn't you do that? A lot of people choose to do that to not pay the commissions. So why not? Well, um, unfortunately, we were working with time when I got there from Chicago. I was there and I was on a mission and I only had a small window what I was working with um, there to help my sister get her house on the market. And actually that's what she was aiming for, to do it herself, cut out the commission. Um, her mind was just scrambled on a lot of different things. And so I'm like, well, unfortunately, you know, um, I hate to tell you, but we don't have that time. So we, we just don't have that time. So uh, when I met you, you kind of mirrored what I was looking for because I needed to check the boxes. I needed to check the boxes. So when I get to Seattle, I need to go bam, 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 bam. And as I was checking those boxes and after having the conversation with my sister, and I don't wanna say have her on board because as you remember, she wasn't all the way on board still just yet. <laughs> Oh no, but she she knew it because when I got there, she's like, yes, yes, where do I sign? Let's do this. I mean, and she did ask questions. So yeah. <laughs> so my nephew and I, when I got there, I'm like, Maurice, this is what we have to do. I know she's not all the way on board right now, but we need to go ahead and go out and interview some um, some brokers, some realtors. So we have to go out and we have to do this today. And so Believe it or not, you were the first one. Oh, okay. I was checking those boxes to pick up where I was 
at before when I said I was there and I had to check off the boxes. Uh -huh. the I don't want to say the last box, but that one box, it's like you just took off and started checking the others for me. <laughs> I'm like, and I told you, uh, it, when we were there in your office, I said, well, we're going to go ahead and interview some more uh, realtors. And when we left out, that's exactly what we were on. I'm like, well, Maurice, this is bad, and we need to talk to And afterwards, I talked to him. I said, well, you know what? I was really pleased with Mark. So um, he just jailed right in. He knew exactly what we're looking for. So I really don't think we need to go anywhere else. So when we got back to the house, talked to my sister, and we shared with her um, what we came up with. And literally, she was like, okay, okay, all right, okay. We're like, well, he's going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> he's going to be here tomorrow. She was literally saying, okay, okay. I was like, well, you know, you're going to be really pleased with him. I know you're going to be really pleased with him. He's a really sharp guy. He's really on it. And so um, I think maybe it was literally maybe like an hour, hour and a half before you were to arrive. Okay. I'll tell you this, but she was like, well, I really don't think I want to do this. I think I want to follow my first mind and just do it myself. And I'm like, well, <laughs> he's still coming. <laughs> he's still coming. And <sighs> I want you to put on your game face. We're going to sit here and we're going to listen to everything that he has to say. And then I went into prayer and I'm like, Mark has to continue to do exactly what he's been doing. Do not get off at all. Do not deviate. Don't do anything. Just stay it. on target. And you sat there at the table with her and you sold her and that was it. Oh and my God please all the way to the end. Well, good. And she did have her game face on because I'll tell you when I was there, you know, we're always nervous, you know, as confident and experienced as we are, we are always nervous that, you know, I looked the wrong way. I said something wrong. One little thing that they're like, I didn't like, I didn't click with them. Right. And she had such a poker face mm -hmm. that I'm like, I want to take you gambling because I did not know which way this conversation was going. And I'm like, and I knew that, you know, you and Maurice, I'm like, okay, cool. You guys are on my side. Well, that's good. But when I sat there and I kind of explained everything and I'm like, I'm trying to read her body language, her facial expressions, nothing. And I'm like, oh my God, this one's a tough one. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm going home and not getting this deal. Like, okay, well, I came and I did my best. Right. Um, but uh, I was very happy that I was able to help. And I remember the one thing that I think sealed the deal, in my impression, and you tell me if I'm wrong, is because I know she asked me this twice. And uh, when I told her that, you know, because like you said, you were working on time. And I knew that, you know, we met Wednesday and you were leaving Friday. So um, when I said to her, I'm like, you just worry about what you need to take with you and I'll take care of the rest. She kind of stopped and looked at me. She's like, that's all I have to do. Yes. And I think, you know, we said a couple other things. And at the end, when we recap, uh, she's like, okay, so all I have to do is worry about what I need to take. I said, yeah, I'm like, and I'll take care of the rest. And I, and at that point, I'm just like, okay, yes. Yeah, I'll do everything just you know, let me know. And she's like, yes, let's sign. I'm like, yes, let's make this quick before she changes her mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know what? There's two things. One, she is, a, a, a uh, she loves gambling. Oh my God. See, oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> you were not off. And also the second thing that you were not off on, um, I think that did concern her because you've been in this house, her and her husband, after she lost her husband. And then now what she's dealing with as far as with her life um, expectancy and everything just being thrown in her lap, it was so bitter. It can't say it was bittersweet, but it was pretty bitter. And the sweet part is where you came in 
and you were able to offer your services above and beyond what we were expecting. And uh, you are correct. That is pretty much um, what helps sell the deal, what helps sell the deal. And with me, I do not remember the name that you gave Miss Sally Sue. I don't know whatever her name was, the little elderly lady that the story you gave us and you said, don't worry about it. Just leave it. I got it. That was the story that sold me. And it was and Sally. It, it was Sally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it was, it, I couldn't remember what the name was. Yeah. But yeah and that that's pretty much what sold me. It helped uh, sell the deal for me um, because I said, um, after we walked out, I said, that's what we're looking for. Because my sister, she just, um, after so many years, her and her husband, she just had so much. She just had so much. And she loved QVC. She loved QVC. And she would watch QVC like it was a telephone. I mean, tel television show. Like my husband watched um, CNN. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally just all day. And um, she would just sit and she would buy and had to get rid of a lot of things, a lot of precious things and precious memories. And for you to um, mention to us, just take what you can. Everything else, we'll go ahead. We have some places that we can donate the things to. Yeah. If you have places that you would like to personally donate them to, um, what we will do, if you don't, we'll don't take over from there and we'll donate them somewhere else. Yeah. You know, um, to give to someone that could appreciate you know, because it wasn't just giving things away, but we just couldn't pack everything and bring them to Chicago. So no. someone that could appreciate uh, everything that she had and um, the help that helped, helped a lot. Well, good. And we did, you know, we were able to donate some stuff. Um, unfortunately, not all of it could have been donated, but um, a lot of the stuff got repurposed. Um, my stager, um, Jessica, I think, took a couple of pieces from the house. Mm -hmm. So those are also helping. They're being, you know, repurposed and they're <laughs> helping in, in um, you know, showcasing other houses. So they are making their appearance in other homes. Um, so we, and we donated as much as we possibly could. And, you know, we're glad that, uh, you know, you know uh, my colleague Sue helped me with this, but we're glad that we were able to help help your family. It was a very, very tough situation. Uh, you know, that I came in at the very end of, of her stay here. And it was very sensitive. And it's like, I totally get where you are. This is the last thing that you really need to be worried about. So I'm glad that I was able to, you know, take that off off, you know, your family's plate and, uh, and make good, you know, because I think at the very end, uh, we did very well. Yeah, so excellent top notch i we really appreciate everything and um not just that i mean you were very compassionate and you showed that you care it wasn't just a closed deal you know even when the deal was over you know we still heard from you and so that was very impressive and it meant a lot to the family it really oh, good did. good and i you know and i and i talked to uh my husband christian actually says he's like Hey, how's the how's the family from Chicago doing? So you know, it's good that we keep in touch, and um, you know, and and you're telling me what you're doing with your career. So it, it's good, it's good to hear that. And I I still remember. Well, I can't remember if it was during the transaction or I think it was after. I was flying back from somewhere, and I ended up at uh, at O'Hare. And I mm -hmm. called you or I messaged you or something. I'm like, oh my God, we're here. Let me call her. See how she's doing. <laughs> In Chicago, yeah. In Chicago, buddy. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, this is good. One of these days I will make it up to Chicago. Uh, a friend of mine moved up there. I want to say 10 years and I haven't visited him. Um uh, so it's still on my list to go. So we're we're all gonna have to get together and go out and celebrate especially when all of this is over and we can actually be social again yeah actually things are opening up again this weekend so. oh my god what phase are you in 
Um, is that phase four? That's the last phase. Oh, yes. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Uh, three or four. We're but going to three. You're going to three. Yeah. The only thing they're worried about the spring breakers. So now what they're doing is opening up the vaccine even you know broader. So okay. More people, even if your um, your health isn't compromised. Um, they're opening it up to pretty much almost everyone where they okay. go ahead and get vaccine because they want to get ahead of uh, the spike from the yeah. spring break, pretty much. Yeah. Well, good, good. Yeah, we can't wait. I think we go into uh, phase three at the end of the month. So next week we should be into that, which is good. We're all excited about that. And, you know, everybody's lining up. Go get your shot. Go get your shot. So, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day. And it was funny that the only time I've ever had to worry about any shots was every time I would take my dog to um, the groomer or to um, uh, the, the uh, what is it the like the day boarding where to go play with the other dogs. Mm -hmm. Well, we can only have them here and socialize them if they have all their shots. So now it's like we're like dogs now. We're like, do you have your shots so you can come out and play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna remember that. <laughs> I'm just like, and I was, you know, I was talking to my friend Kelly about that. He was just busting up. I'm like, yeah. It's like, do you have your shots? You need to come ahead and play. If nope, sorry, you can't go. Play. <laughs> right. It's like, oh, it's interesting. Um, so I'm interested. I'm curious as to what were some of the characteristics that you were looking for with the realtor, especially, you know, in such a time crunch and sensitive situation that your family was in. Well, for one, um, we wanted to look for an agent that really knew their stuff. Um, they really needed to be able to um, showcase the house in a way where my sister would be able to um, make out really well as far as closing on the deal. Um, in order for her to be pleased, because like I mentioned before, her main focus was to sell it herself, um, to get as much as she can. I don't, I can't think of the name of the show. Um, Mrs. Kravitz. Do you remember Mrs. Kravitz? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> the neighbor. In the it was from Bewitched. Bewitched. My sister and I, before cell phones came out, my mom always said, you all talk to each other like you're across the street from each other because you had to pay for the long distance and mm -hmm. things like that. So, but we talked two or three times a day and uh, I think the house on the left had sold and uh, we were, we would talk and she was like, yeah, you remember my neighbors over there? Well, their house went in the market and their house went for this. I'm gonna get mine appraised because I'm just wondering, I'm curious and this and that. She was always wondering, uh, her dream was to eventually come back to Chicago too. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I went after she had gotten sick, but um, and I was hoping for my sister to make it back, but um, she, I called her the Mrs. Kravitz, <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, their house." So I was wondering what mine would go for, and this, that, and so um, that's why I know she was really focused on really getting a a, a pretty good buck for her house. Yeah. And so we wanted someone who was going to be able to do that for her in order for her to, you know, um, just relinquish everything over to them and let them do what they have to do. Because okay. she, that was really very important to her um, because um, her and her husband, you would have loved her husband. Her and her husband, they worked really hard throughout the years. Their main focus was, you know, so Maurice would do well in this and that and get a good investment um, off of what they put in. And um, you guys did really well. You did well, good. Thank you, thank so, you. So that's what we were looking for as far as when it came to getting an agent. Someone would really take what was going on serious. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. So I know that, you know, when, uh, you know, when I came into the house and when I took over the house, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't want to say it was like in rough shape because it wasn't, but there was a lot going on because you guys had already taken everything out and it was hard to actually see the house because you were in the middle of moving, packing, 
stuff was being donated. What are we taking? What are we not take out? You know, what's going to be trashed? I mean, it was all out. So, um, and that's really where I say where it was kind of rough because I walked in like, oh my God, you are literally moving. You're in the middle of moving. And, um, you know, I, I, I had some recommendations. And first of all, was like, all right, we need to move everything <laughs> so I can see where, where the house is. So we did not originally talk about doing any type of touch-ups or updates to the house because I couldn't see them. And it was, all right, we have to clear the house out. Once we did that, um, you know, there were some recommendations that I made. You know, I think it was, well, it had to be professionally photographed, you know, talked about staging the house because that that, that would have made a big difference, and it, which I think it did. And also, but there was some investments that I recommended that the family do um, to spruce it up. So, you know, I know that, um, we have to redo some of the floors. They had to be refinished. Yeah. Uh, bathroom needed to do, we would do some touch ups in the bathroom, painting the house, do some few repairs here and there. Um, what was the, I was curious and I don't think I ever asked you, but it was like, what was the initial response to that when, when I made those recommendations? Um, that we, it was, I believe if I can, remember well I don't think there was we you had all of our trust in you to do what you needed to do I don't recall do you recall any I don't recall any resistance at all I don't think so um I think I think you guys had to talk about it because it was a it was a few thousand dollars we did have to talk about it that's right we had to talk about it and we came back maybe like a day later yeah too late maybe a day later I yeah know, I'm to do too, but maybe a day later we talked about it and we came back to you yeah um but uh she was okay with it she was okay with everything because she was aware that there were a few things matter of fact i believe one thing was in a garage i can't recall because it's not it wasn't my house i think something was going on in the garage that needed to be repaired or something needed to be so fixed. There was a, what we perceived to be, so I think it the, there was the, um, the master bathroom, the shower. That, yeah. Right, that was incomplete. And I think, um, I think she said that it had something to do with, that they uh, found a leak or something and they had fixed the leak, which was in the shower. Mm -hmm. So it was still uncovered because it wasn't finished. So we need to finish that. But because the shower had never been used, we're like, we need to test this out first. So there might be a potential where we still need to repair it because we don't know how it was repaired when it was done. So we had to work on that. And I think, I think she's like, okay, fine. And then I think we tested it. And there was still a little bit of work that needed to be done in that. But I think we repaired that. Yeah. Um, and then that took care of that. We were able to fix it. But um, I think that was it. Um, you know, I know that it was a tough situation um, financially for me to say, you know what, there's stuff that that should be done to the house, you know, and it's going to cost, you know, a, a few thousand dollars to do. And it wasn't like outrageous number either. But I think with doing those updates that we did, we, we were able to get a good return. Because I remember, so the house was originally... Well, I I was I we listed the house for five eighty five, and um, I had a couple of investors come in to look at the house. I'm like, okay, what would you pay for this house? Um, it was quick too. Yes, yeah, w without doing any repairs to it. And I remember that you know he came and he looked at the house. Well, the first guy came in and looked at the house, and. And I'm like, okay, I want to know what he's going to say, what he's going to say, what he's going to say. And he came back and he's like, 350. And I'm like, oh, if I even mention that to the family, they're going to they're gonna just like cut my head off. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, yeah, we got the other, the other quote from the other uh, investor and it was like 385. And I'm like, oh no, 
that is just not going to work. So kind of to think that that would have been the selling price mm -hmm. for the house, because I know as a first time home buyer, it's really hard to go into a house. You're like, cool. You know, it's hard to come up with your down payment to begin with. And then it's like, cool, you're going to get into this house and then be like, oh, well, I need to refinish the floors. You know, I need to paint, you know, I need to do this. Then, you know, and then it's Pandora's box. Cause then you start doing one thing. You're like, God, that looks so good. It's like, well, it doesn't go with the rest of the house. Now you got to do this. Now you got to do this. And there, it just goes on and on. <clears throat> and so I think that initial conversation that we had about um, the investment in, you know, let's do this to, to, do right to the house, you know, and present it well out in the market. Um, you know, it's it's like you always want to make that good impression, that first good impression, right? It's like, no, this is what we have to do. And I think that, well, I'm glad that you guys took the advice, you know, and, and that you trusted me with that because it was crazy what happened when the house went on the market. And it was so interesting. I mean, I, I had to take a call. Um, <clears throat> once it hit the market, it was just crazy. I had people on it, going to see it. It's like booking it, booking it, booking it. And I remember one night, um, so this was in December. So uh, what I think is the worst time to put the house up on the market. And I know we talked about that. We're like, well, can you wait until January? You're like, no. It's got to go now. I'm like, all right, worst time of the year. All right, let's do this. I remember that you did ask us to, could we wait? We're like, no, it has to do it now. We have yeah. to do it now. It has to be <laughs> now. Yeah, and I didn't, now that I know what happened, you know, with your sister, I didn't want to pry and I didn't want to get too much into the, you know, what was going on. And I'm like, and I, someone asked me, I think a couple of people were like, why don't they want to wait? I'm like, that is their business. They need to keep that private. Whatever they tell me is what I'm going to go with. They said, now it's got to happen now. So, but I remember, uh, you know, back to the story, I remember that I was going to our company holiday party. Mm -hmm. So, and it was pouring. So it's December and I'm driving and an agent calls me, and I don't think I ever told you this, but an agent calls me and she says, Mark, I am outside of the house and this agent won't let me in. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, oh yeah, um, you know, he's taking longer than he's supposed to be in there, but he's got the keys and he will not let me in. He says that this is a private showing and that, and that uh, I have to wait. And I'm like, oh, you, oh, you're kidding. She's like, yes, can you please call him? Cause he slammed the door in my face. Oh, no. It was getting real. <laughs> they want that house. <laughs> yes. I started laughing. Her and I just started laughing. I'm like, are you serious? She's like, yes. She's like, I went up there, you know, and then I, she goes, I went back to the car. The clients are there in their car and they're waiting. And I went up to there. I went back to the car 10 minutes later, went back to like, are you almost done? And just slammed the door in my face. And I'm like, all right, I need to pull over for this. Cause I am not, I'm like, I just need to pull over. So I pull over, I call the agent. I think it's like two or three times, send him a text. We refuse to pick up my call. Send him a text. I'm like, this is who I am. I'm, I'm calling you because so-and-so is happening. Um, I think like five, 10 minutes later, he texted me back and he's like, okay, we're done. She can come into the house. Oh. And I was just like, oh my God. So when I got to the holiday party, I'm like, oh, listen to this. This just happened. Everybody's like, you're kidding. I'm like, oh no. These agents are like, they're like cat fights trying to get into the house. Oh. Uh, so that was the talk of the at the party, you know, the cat fight that was <laughs> happening to get into your sister's house. Um, and I was just like, is this normal? You know, I'm, I'm asking agents that have been doing this for like 20 years. I'm like, is this normal? They're like, no, it's not. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. So I called the, you know, the agent called me back later and I'm like, are you okay? She's like, yeah. She says, I totally get it. She's like, but you know, they were taking a little bit longer. She goes, I just went up to go let them know that because it's late at night, you know, the sky is falling because it's pouring 
And I wanted to let them know that we were there to see the house and that we had an appointment and, you know, just a courtesy, right? We're there. So don't take too long because we're there, right? And the client's outside. She's like, but I have never been responded to in that way. And I was just like, wow. But, you know, um, I'm glad that we had that level of interest in the house, especially in December, because you know what I told you, you know, when we had that conversation, I'm like, this is the worst time to put the house in the market. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, it's like, okay, let's really set expectations of, as to what can possibly happen. I was not expecting that. But you know what, my sister, I'm not, many times I've been to Seattle, I'm not too familiar as far as with the area um when it comes to housing but my sister always said the area was up and coming now yeah and uh i recall her saying as soon as i put my house on the market i know it's gonna go fast she said she well she should have told me that i remember her always telling me that she just knew that you know um it was gonna get snatched up right away because she always talked about the area how it was up and coming how they yeah. Many different changes in the yeah, and it is, and I agree with her that you know uh, that it was going to go because it is a very desirable neighborhood. Um, the challenge was that it was in the middle of December when yeah. it was going to happen, and no one wants to move, you know, with bad weather in the middle of December. Um, you know, yeah, let's move into a new house. You know, it's just the worst time to do it, and. It's also the time where buyers have an opportunity to negotiate with the sellers because the sell, I mean, really the only reason you put a house up in in December is because you have to sell, you know, something has happened in your life that you have to sell and you can't wait. And this is exactly the situation that you were in. And I'm just like, Oh God, this is going to be tough. But uh, for all of us, I was extremely happy with the level of interest. Um, how was it? I mean, earlier you had made a comment that she was happy with with everything that happened. You know, how did you? How did Maurice? How you know? How did your sister feel about this whole process? We were pleased, and to piggyback off of what you were just saying, as far as with it happening in December, Mark. Only thing that I can say, it was so bittersweet that we were able to get my sister home. We were blessed to meet you. Um, What I can say is that with the transition, with everything that went on and how smooth it went, I can only say that it was nothing but the Lord throughout the whole thing because it was so emotional when I got there. Um, I got the news that if we were going to bring my sister home, we need to do it like now you know all of her family's here um she's made a new life there and literally just like you said the house you know apologized but the house was in the ramshack because i'm literally going through all of her things and i never knew i was going to face what i was facing but this girl had a lot of stuff. <laughs> and it wasn't, yes, it was some things that could have been given, just given away or, you know, but she had a lot of nice things too. And I literally had to go through the closet and go, okay, what are we going to do with this? We got these pals. Okay, give away. Give away. It was emotional for me to just toss things that was so precious to her that we couldn't take, even her dog. I don't know if you got a chance to see her dog, if we still had him or if we had dropped them off yet. No, I think I did. She had a little yeah. tea up, uh, yeah. your, yeah. her heart, you know, um, but we had to bless someone else with them, you know? And so, um, but literally, even though it was emotional and we had to get these things done. I have a girlfriend, her mom, she's no longer with us either, but she always say, my mom said, when we go shopping, 
and you find a parking space right in front of the mall, right in front of the door you're going into, that's going to be a really good shopping day. We're going to (laughs) (laughs) And I was always told as well, when things go smooth like that, that's nothing but the Lord, just over it all. So you're an angel. Oh, thank you. You blessed us. um, Because like I said, I took care of everything I needed to take care of here in Chicago before I jumped on that plane and I knew the things that we needed to do as soon as we got back into Chicago. So um, I know this is what needs to be done when I get to Seattle and I'm checking these boxes, checking these boxes because we only have a week to get our hair. And when we met you, it's like you took the pen out of my hand and you just started taking over and just started checking those boxes, checking those boxes. So as far as in December, putting that house on the market when we did and um, getting a buyer as fast as we did. So sometimes, and this is Martin Luther King, my favorite quote, faith is taking a step when you can't even see the staircase. So we just had to dive in. We had to dive into it and we can't see it with our physical eyes, but he knew you know, and it just took off and everything, just every piece fell into place. Every piece fell into place. My sister was also able before she left here to see um, what she all, she wanted to take control of and she knows she had to relinquish it and just let it go. She was able to um, be pleased with the work that he did, you know, um, got her what she wanted, you know, because she put her trust in you and it just went from there. So she was pleased with that too as well. She was pleased to know that her son is gonna be okay. So everything just, the piece was here. This piece, okay, give me that piece of the puzzle. Okay, it goes here. That piece of puzzle, okay, it goes here. That is how I feel, feel that it went. I awesome. feel, feel that it went just like that. So we were pleased. Good, good. And you know what, and that that's, you know, there were some challenges that, you know, I, I was going through, I'm like, all right, we need to do this. We need to do this. How's this going to work? It's, you know, bad time in the market. And I think this is all the stuff that we, well, it's, I'm going to say, this is all the stuff that I always go through with every single listing, regardless of how the market is, because you just never know, you know, as confident and as experienced as we are, you just don't know how the market is really going to react. Uh, you know, is it going to shift? Are we going to get that interest? We think it is. And, you know, we're looking historical information of all of that. And it's, it feels so good when it all just works out so well, you know, that, that, you know, I've done what I know what to do. I've, I've looked at the potential pitfalls, you know, and calculated that in. And I look at, you know, what we, um, what is the best approach? What are all the strategies to make it happen? So when it comes out like this and it's so smooth, especially when there's so much to do, it's like, it's great and it feels so good. And, you know, and it, there's always challenges, but I'm glad that everything worked out really well. Um, It was, I mean, what happened with the house was just amazing. So, you know, it was listed at 585 in December we had 55 agents come through the house. It sold in five days. We got 10 offers and it was just like, boom, 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 boom. You know, one beating the other and just went up. And it finally sold about what, 22% above the asking price for 716. So all I kept on thinking as I was going through this and looking at all the offers and reviewing them, I'm just like, okay, I think she's going to be pleased with this. I hope she's going to be pleased with this, you know, uh, because in talking to her, that was one of the concerns. It's like, I want to make sure that my son is going to be taken care of. And I'm just thinking, all right. And, you know, and this entire time, I'm just thinking, Maurice, 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 okay, you know, I, I, I got to do good. And, but there's only so much that I can do. So I'm like, all right, let me get my best game out there and make it happen and make sure that it does. And I am so glad that everything worked out so well. Um, you know, there were some things that we had to work through, you know, at the very end uh, with the house, but the buyer's agent, awesome. 
person to work with. Uh, the buyer was awesome, very flexible. And, you know, uh, Maurice so stepped up to, to handle all of this. And I know that he was going through a tough, tough emotional time. And I'd be like, all right, Maurice, I need you to do this. Let me explain it to you. And I know, you know, very young. And I'm like, all right, ask me any questions. You know, nothing is a silly question. Nothing is a stupid question. You're not wasting my time. Ask, let me explain it to you. And he just stepped up. So it, it was so good. And I hope that um, this also was a good experience for him to later, he's just like, okay, I've done this. I've done this. And when he's ready to buy his home, he's like, okay, I'm kind of familiar with this, you know, yeah. so, you know, a little bit of experience there. Um, what would you, when you are, so if you want to advise someone, you know, I know you've taken, you know, the real estate courses, um, you know, for you to start your career. And I want to talk about that as well. Uh, but uh, what would be your advice, you know, for um, someone who's looking to sell their house and they're thinking about selling it on their own? And once they've decide that that's probably not the best or that, that that's not the best route for them, that what should they look for in terms of finding an agent? I would say the um, first thing that they should look for as far as finding an agent, um, first of all, I don't think it's a good idea for them to try and sell it on their own, <laughs> for one, because you need to know as far as what the houses are going for. An agent will know that. They will be able to um, give them that information. An agent will be able to talk to them uh, about other houses that have sold in the area. And it would, the agent will be able to bring to light things that they wouldn't know, okay. things that they wouldn't know. Um, I'm trying to think, um, I just wouldn't think it would be a good idea to do it because I believe they will be able to get more. You pay for what you get pretty much. You pay for what you get. If you pay, you know, um, yes, they're going to get uh, off the end as far as, I'm sorry, Mark, I do apologize. My words aren't coming. No, um, no you're good. I don't want them to right now. But um, the agent at the end, they're going to get their percentage as far as- The commission. Uh, commission, thank you. The commission um, off the end but it's well worth it because they're actually doing the work for you that you're not able to do for yourself. It's just like a, a, a taxpayer. You, I mean, a tax, you're going to get your taxes done. Okay, either you're going to do them yourself or you're going to let someone professional go ahead and do your taxes for you. Yeah. And, and uh, pretty much um, those missing loops that you're not going to see, you know, and that's what an agent is going to do for you pretty much. Yeah. Okay, I hope I did well explaining that to you. For yeah, you. no, that's good. I mean, and you know, and the biggest portion I think it is for um, for sellers who want to sell their house on their own is to save on that commission. They're like, no, I don't want to pay that commission because I can make the money, and you know, they feel that they're competent enough to sell their house because how hard can it possibly be to sell a house, right? Uh, exactly, and they don't know. And even for us, you know, with the laws changing as quickly as they do, um, you know, it's not like buying a pair of jeans. You're like, eh, whatever. You know, I didn't like them. I'm not going to wear them. I'll donate them, whatever. I mean, there's so many legalities to it. There's so many rights. There's so many um, contract terms and conditions that can go one way or the other um, you know, and these are expensive mistakes that can possibly happen. And, you know, I, I understand where the sellers are coming from. I get it. But I do believe that it is, um, you do get, I mean, you do get what you pay for. You know, I was working with a with a client who um, we were looking for a house or I'm looking on the I'm working on the buyer side. And we found this one house and, you know, they're like, 
Mark, what do you think about this house? And I'm like, okay, well, that looks interesting. I'm like, the price seems a little off. They're like, well, you know, and it was still a competitive market. And they're like, well, it's been sitting on the market, you know, for, I think it was like 35 days or something like that. And I'm just thinking, well, that's odd. I'm like, something has to be wrong with this house. So I go online and I, um, I think the house was listed around eight, 850, I think it was. And I look online, I'm like, well, based on all of the comps, the house is worth, you know, at least 950. And, and I was just like, okay, that's interesting. So at the end of everything, um, we got the closing paperwork, we got everything, and we get this, the, the settlement statement that shows all of the expenses. And it actually shows the agent commissions on there. And I saw that the other agent um, was selling the house or their commission was a lot less. I mean, significantly less. And I'm just thinking, okay, that's interesting. Um, I wonder what was that relationship? What was that um, agreement? Um, uh, you know, even my client said, well, if we, you know, I think if the house was staged, I think if they would have done a video or a Matterport through the house, uh, they probably could have sold the house for more. And, um, you know, once the, the appraisal came in, the house was valued for more than when it sold for. And I'm just thinking, and I don't know all, you know, everything that happened on the other side or what was the arrangement, but I'm just thinking, well, you know, if there would have been a little more of an investment done on the other side, um, I think the house would have sold for a lot more. And I've been in other transactions where, um, you know, the, the listing agent says they're doing just the bare minimum. And then I see in the commission that they're only charging one, one and a half percent. And I'm just thinking, oh, I totally get it. Why it was challenging to work with you, why the marketing, you know, wasn't up to par. And I honestly believe, I mean, I've been on the buyer side, which has been great for my clients, but they got a good deal on those houses because they, the sellers, I, I feel left some money behind, you yeah. know, and left some money on the table. And say like our situation, um, our situation, when you mentioned, I think you said it was an investor that came first, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. The invest, it was a flipper, it was an investor. Yeah. And so with our situation, so imagine if we hadn't, talk my sister into going with the realtor, allowing you to assist us. And we went at it um, the way that uh, she wanted to. We would have lost in a number of different areas. We wouldn't have been able to have the assistance from you as far as we would have had all of the stuff in the house, okay? But if we would have went with um, her trying to sell it on her own, and when you mentioned this was not a good time in December, okay? And we're working with time, we need to sell this house. So imagine an investor coming in, and I think you say, let's say for instance, I'm gonna throw some numbers out there. 385, um, you said, and um, the investor probably said, you know what, because this needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed, this needs to be fixed. That's gonna take about $5,000. So let's take that 5,000 out of there. So we'll give you 380. And because we're thinking, oh, because of the time of the year, it's not going to sell. This is probably going to drag. We know it's worth more, but this is what we're working with. And we end up selling. We would not have seen, you know, what she was blessed with, the yeah. 700. So it, by having um, a realtor, sometimes when people are looking, sellers are looking to sell their house oh, I want to cut out the um, commission. I want to cut out the commission. That's all they're thinking about. But while you're cutting out the commission, you're cutting out a lot of other things too. <laughs> you're going to lose out. And when you look at the big picture, you're going to go back and wish you had to pay the commission. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, it, it's the win-win. It, you know, it is. And I respect, you know, the sellers wanting to do that, but I agree with you. There is so much that goes behind it. And 
the sellers don't necessarily need to see everything that happens behind the scenes because that's why you're paying us to do this. You're paying us to to take care of all of this. So I agree. So I mean, you know, th thank you for that. And I think that's really good advice, especially coming from, you know, from your perspective, because um, I know we can tell this to sellers day and night. Right. You know, and they're just like, oh, you know, it's a sales pitch. They just, you know, want me to hire them. But I think it's really good for for them to hear it from, you know, a past client to see the difference. And that kind of rolls into, into, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about this, about, you know, your career, you know, what you decided to do, but it's like, um, you're starting to get into the real estate world. Uh, you know, so this is also very valuable. So, you know, um, I remember, you know, one of our early conversations, you're like, oh, I want to get into staging. And many people don't see the value in staging. And I know that it makes a huge difference. You know, I have a degree in interior design and I used to flip homes. So I get it. I know what that looks like. I can see the vision. I've taken clients into homes and I'm like, oh, I like the house, but I don't like the, the, the color that they painted inside. I'm just thinking, are you, are you kidding? You're right. going to pass on this house because the color I'm like, I'll buy you the paint, right? Painting party, order pizza, <laughs> call all your friends. You know, that's the easiest, you know, the easiest, I guess, mistake to make, you know, the cheapest mistake to make. Um, but tell me about what you, what you're venturing into and why. Well, I have a passion for design. I think I was born <laughs> with an eye <laughs> as far as when it comes to designing. I love it. Um, and I went so many years with individuals, friends, family members, everyone just telling me, Jan, you know, um, you do such a great job with this. You do such a great job with that as far as designing. Even my husband, he just, it, it's, it's something I enjoy and he doesn't get it. Even with the Christmas tree, I have certain colors on my Christmas tree and I'll go back and I'll spend all this money for the fall. And he said, you're spending money again. You're going to do the tree again, a different color this year. And you know how expensive ornaments are. <laughs> yes. You better be going to after Christmas sales to stock up. I don't want that color anymore. I had that color last year. Oh, <laughs> uh -uh. The same thing as far as with kitchen, bathroom, I'm constantly changing the colors. And he's like, well, how many times can you change? Well, I want this look for the summer. I want this look. That's a fall color. I don't want that color anymore. Yeah. So um, that's enjoyment. It's an art for me. And so um, I finally dove out, dove into accepting my gift that I have. And um, now getting out and having an opportunity to sell myself and my gift to individuals, letting individuals, like you mentioned before, utilizing your services as far as when it comes to staging. Um, helping sellers understand that when you stage your house, one, it could possibly get you more money um, than what you're looking for and expecting. Um, and also it can shorten your time on the market, okay? And also when staging, sometimes, I don't wanna say hide, you don't wanna hide, but it can kind of calm down, mask, the things that could possibly jump out to the buyers that don't necessarily have to jump out at them and bring yeah. things to their attention that don't have to, you know, that can actually hurt you. Yeah, the imperfections of a house because all houses have them. Yeah, yeah. And so what you want to do, you want to bring out the beauty in your home um, to the uh, buyers. And so... Um, that's what I love doing. I have a passion for it. So thank you for asking me um, about Jan's staging and designs. Um, I love it. I love it. I, I enjoy it. Well, perfect. An opportunity. I wish I was in Seattle. Give me an opportunity to do one of your homes. You'd be like, Jan, when are you ready to move? When are you ready to move? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ever decide, let me know. Um, you know, it's, I think it's so valuable to stage a house because it's, it's so hard to envision 
um, how you would live in a space. And some of these spaces are a little tricky. You know, if you're working with a very small space, you're like, well, I don't even see how a couch fits here. And it's like, well, yeah, you have a huge sectional. That mm -hmm. sectional probably won't fit here, but you can get a, a smaller couch that would fit here. So I think that staging really gives gives you an idea of how to use this space. And also, I mean, the biggest part, it gives you the, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the dimensions, gives you the proportion of, okay, cool. This is how big the living room is. So here's a couple of couches, here's the table. Okay, cool. You can still walk around. There's there's space. So I think you know, really dealing with the dimensions and the perception of a room is really important. Uh, well, it's challenging when you get in, but it's important to understand how it really works. So when it's staged, you're like, okay, cool. I see that, and I think it's a big value. And I've seen. I just did a house uh, uh, last year where the seller was just like, you know what, I don't want anything to do. I don't want to stage it. I don't want to do anything with the house. And I actually had the house professionally photographed um, the way that he wanted it. And afterwards, I'm like, here are the photos. He goes, oh my God, it looks so great. You know, I didn't think it was going to look this good. And I'm like, you know what? But if we do a little bit of changes to it, and I did the same thing, you know, that I, that I did with, with you uh, and your sister, it was a um, all right, we should replace the carpet, we should paint it, and we should stage it. And he's like, well, really, I ran all the numbers, I gave him the numbers. He's like, Mark, I trust you. I'm like, he's like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. So, and I actually did comps on his house of what we could justify to the lender, the way that it was just cleaned, um, and photographed before we did any of the updates. I think we, he invested about, oh God, I think it was like $12,000, which was about what your family invested in, in, in your house and your sister's house. Um, and he got what I would say about $75,000 more yep. just by doing those updates because it showed so differently. Mm -hmm. And he's like, okay, Mark, I trust you. Let's do this set it all up. I sent him the pictures because um, he's in Michigan. Um, uh, no, where is it? Uh, he's in Detroit. I think out in Detroit. Um, so I sent him the photos after everything was done. He's like, Mark, he's like, I don't even recognize the house. <laughs> and it was one of those cases that, you know, same thing, put it on the market. And it yeah. was agent after agent coming through, coming through, coming in multiple times. Everybody's calling. Do you have any offers? Do you have any offers? Again, multiple offers sold above. And I think that made such a huge difference, just investing that little, that little portion of it. And I know that not everybody's in a position to invest money into their homes. Um, you know, Windermere, uh, we have a program called Windermere Ready, where um, we will offer a loan against the house to do some of these updates to prep the house to sell. So it's a good opportunity where someone's like, you know, I don't have the money to invest in it right now, but if if I could, I would. And I think we can loan up to like $50,000 to do those updates. So in your, in, your, in your family's case, and also this past client, I think the total investment was about $12,000. And that gave such a huge return at the end because the house showed so, so different and it was hot. Yeah, yeah, so. I believe in what it can do. I mean, because sometimes they can just walk into a home and they can say, oh my God, <laughs> what was the builder thinking? What am I gonna do with this space? <laughs> exactly. Imagine it, you know, so yeah. And then you go in and you just trick the place out and then it's like, oh, this is so beautiful. And then, you know, and then they can envision, you know, and they start getting ideas. The will starts then. Yeah. What do you do with it? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's really great. So um, thank you so much, you know, for taking time this Saturday morning and, uh, and, you know, having this talk with me and, you know, for the insight. And it's always so good to connect with you. 
Um, I do want to give a shout out to you and your business. So give me it, give me your website and I will put it on the link so people can reach out to you. I will. I will. Oh, you want me to give it to you now? Yes. Oh. We want we want to record it so we can share that. It's Jan's. It's Jan. I'm sorry, my mom. I don't know what's going on with my hands <laughs> today, Mark. I apologize. Okay. It's Jan Staging and Designs. Perfect. Dot com. Perfect. So I will put that in the in the um, in, in the bio uh, for today's uh, podcast, and people can go out there and check you out and reach yes. out to you. And you know, and as always, if you have any questions on anything that I could help, even though I'm on the other side, uh, please feel free to reach out, uh, ask questions, thoughts, whatever, brainstorm. I do that with several people, so please feel reach I'm out. Always, you left a lasting impression with me, Mark. I'm always willing to see what I can learn from you. Well, thank you, thank you, and Very professional. Thank you, and do send Maurice my best. Send him a big hug. Hope that he's I doing will. well. I will. I will. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. For blessing us. Yes. With your services. Thank you. Take care.